The iPhone 6S, the entire internet seems to agree, this is one fast little mother. And uh, in fact, when the first performance results started to surface, we found articles like this cropping up all over the place, saying that in Geekbench in particular, the iPhone 6S outperforms in some cases the 2015 MacBook. Certainly an impressive feat, but as we demonstrated in this video here where we water-cooled the 2015 MacBook, a part of the problem with the performance of that particular device is that it drastically thermal throttles, so you're not getting all of the performance that you should have out of it, which led my inquisitive mind to go, well, hold on a second. Is there potentially then even more performance under the hood of the iPhone 6S? What would happen if we were to water-cool it? Stay tuned. The Logitech G303 features a lightweight design, an advanced optical sensor with Delta Zero technology for precise tracking and RGB lighting to match your setup. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. Okay, so first order of business then is to establish uh, a baseline while it's being air cooled. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Geekbench continuously for 10 minutes, recording the scores each time it finishes, and then tracking how the scores change over time as the device heats up from being put under a continuous load. So we've got our first number, 4446. Boom, let's run it again and record that. So this is going to be kind of boring to watch. Um, you guys can tune out for a bit. 4424. Run it again. So this is interesting. At a controlled room temperature of 24 degrees Celsius, the iPhone 6S does not throttle appreciably at all over a course of about 10 minutes. So um, yeah, this kind of makes the water cooling experiment a foregone conclusion, but what the hey, I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. So here goes. Now, while the rumor mill does indicate that the iPhone 6S is indeed quite waterproof, I do not intend to submerge it directly in the liquid because I still need this iPhone 6S to work for my review of aforementioned device. So I'm just going to be using an ice water bath to maintain it at the coolest possible temperatures. And then I will be putting the iPhone inside a bag and sealing it up. Be using my patented vacuum seal technique. Minus your videos suck. Today they do. Wow, can the touch sensor work through the plastic? What do you think? Ah, look at that, it did. Cool. So now we're gonna have to do another 10 minutes of runs here and uh, we will be back. Four, 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 three. 4443, four, four, holy shit, this is really consistent. Four more runs, and then we are through our 10 minutes of testing. And the only real takeaway here is that water cooling the iPhone 6S makes it run ever so slightly, like, like part of a percent, more consistently from run to run. Impressive. So the iPhone 6S basically when running CPU intensive benchmarks anyway, doesn't thermal throttle at all. Which brings up a couple more questions. Is our testing methodology then even relevant? So in order to validate that, we've brought in some other devices. We've got the HTC One M9 featuring the infamous Snapdragon 810. We've got the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge featuring the Exynos 7420. And we've got the LG G4 featuring the Snapdragon 808. This should give us a good cross-section of other devices to compare the thermal throttling performance of the iPhone 6S against. I'm going to run these phones for 10 minutes and observe how their scores track over that period of time. This is gonna take some pretty rapid data entry in order to achieve, but I think the Galaxy S6 Edge is gonna come up first here. 
Okay, so uh, as expected, the S6 Edge with the Exynos 7420 fell about 10 to 12 percent over time. Okay, we saw that coming. The G4 didn't thermal throttle at all and kept its performance extremely consistent across the board. But the 1M9 was all over the map, like all over the place. Like our first score was higher than any score I can find online anywhere for the 1M9 in Geekbench. Um, and then our later scores were way lower. So we're gonna do two things here. We're gonna rerun the 1M9. I'm, gonna, I'm letting it get back to room temperature now. I'm not running anything. And we're gonna throw the ZTE Axon into the mix. Also a Snapdragon 810 powered device. So that'll give us two different data points for this and two separate devices for Snapdragon 810. Let's see how that goes. All right, so it's clear as mud now. Um, the 1M9 didn't go as high and didn't fall as low on the second run. And the Axon started out much lower and fell as low as the 1M9 did on our first run, showing us, if nothing else, that the Snapdragon 810 is all over the fucking map as far as performance is concerned, which I guess isn't telling you guys anything you didn't already know if you've been keeping up with the fiasco that is the Snapdragon 810. Now, let's find out how everything fares in the ice water. So Brandon asked a great question off camera about our testing methodology here. Does having the phones next to each other affect the results of the benchmark because of the temperature of the water potentially changing? Uh, to which I replied, no, we should actually be fine because as long as there's still ice in the water, it will be give or take a little bit, zero degrees. So we're just gonna load it up with the four phones here and go ham. Oh, come on now. Everything just stop auto-rotating for like, oh, I guess I could turn it off. Okay, I think that one already, what? All our phones are in the ice water. So I'm gonna let them all cool down, be running nice and optimally cold, and then we will do another 10 minutes of benchmarks on all the phones in ice water. All right, the time is now 1.16. We have four water-cooled phones, and we are ready to go! Try not to get too excited. Okay, Essex Edge up first. 5522. Wowza! Who's gonna be next? Looks like it's gonna be the M9! Wow, that's surprising. 3901. All right. 3510 for the G4. 3861. All right, well, we'll keep doing this for 10 minutes. 5413. So it took a little kind of staring at it. I'm waiting for numbers to pop out of the screen to me, but I think we've got some pretty interesting conclusions. So number one, the iPhone 6S is freaking awesome, running just CPU intensive tasks. The CPU does throttle if you load up the GPU. Um, it basically doesn't throttle at all under air cooling. And what's cool, and I can't say this about every Snapdragon 808 device, but I can say it about the G4, is that it also gives zero craps about whether it is air cooled or whether it is in a bag surrounded by ice water. This puppy performs exactly the same under all scenarios for us. Everything else was a little bit different. It looks like the Exynos processor in the S6 Edge performs about 10% better under ice water and the Snapdragon 810 enabled devices, both the Axon and the 1M9 were a little bit all over the place, but if we consider our first 1M9 run a bit of it, wow, the 1M9 is actually still a little bit warm even though it's in water that is definitely cold. That's amazing. Um, so, right, so if we throw out that first run with the 1M9, it looks like it actually stays at about peak performance when it's in ice water, and the Axon destroys 
its air-cooled performance underwater across the board, showing that the Snapdragon 810 has a lot of potential, but that it has to be unlocked by some kind of a design that can cool it, whether that's a heat pipe or water cooling or whatever the case may be. So you know what kind of sites that you could view on any of the phones we tested today? Sites made on Squarespace. All of their awesome templates feature responsive design, which means they'll look good on a monitor like this, or they'll look good on anything down as small as a phone, and their plans start at only $8 a month, including hosting. And they've got a bunch of other great benefits as well. So you pick your template, then whether you want to build a blog or a store or like a company information website, or I mean, really any reason you could possibly want to build a website, you go ahead, you get started, you use their 24 seven tech support, you insert your own pictures and text and boom, awesome looking website. And if you decide to spring for an entire year worth of the service at a time, they will throw in a domain name for you for free. And they're always adding all kinds of cool new features. Like we haven't talked about this one in a while, but they've got like a neat little logo designer and all kinds of cool stuff. So head over to squarespace.com and use offer code Linus to save 10% on your Squarespace site today. And if you're not sure if you want to buy, by the way, they have a 14 day free trial, which is free. So it costs nothing. That's what a free trial is. Thank you guys for coming along with this exciting, I hope, little ride. As always, don't forget to like the video if you liked it. If you disliked it though, you know where that button is. If you did like it though, get subscribed. Uh, leave a comment telling us what you liked about it. Even consider supporting us by buying a cool shirt like this one, uh, changing your Amazon bookmark, one with our affiliate code. You'll find instructions for that up there. Or even by supporting us directly through the LinusTechTips.com community forum. Thanks again for watching and I have my calendar in front of me so I'm just totally gonna cheat here. If you're looking for something cool to watch, we actually just did the Manly Guide to Cable Management, which, ow, you can see the results for here actually. This is, uh, well, this fell off, but whatever. There, you guys get my point. Very manly, very much cable tidy. Bye.